Hi everyone, this is your chess puzzler and a very warm welcome to the channel. Let me start with one name, Magnus Carlsen, and this name speaks volumes. Magnus Carlsen was the one and only star of the 2017 Blitz in Lover. Not only he won the tournament, but his performance, especially in the Blitz, was exemplary. In 18 rounds, he scored a whopping 14 and a half points. He started off by winning Anand. He drew against Kramnik. Then it was Maxim's time to surrender. After that, it was Ivanchuk, then Nepomniachi, then Aronian, and finally Wesley So. And if Carlsen did not manage to win from Kramnik the first time round, Kramnik went down when the two met again. But there is one player we didn't mention, Holland's number one, Anish Giri. Carlsen won everyone in the field, but not when it came to Giri. And this is in fact the only game in the Blitz Carlsen lost. And before I jump into the game, the second encounter between Carlsen and Giri in round 16 ended up in a goalless result. Giri White went for a D4 opening and with knight of 6, c4, e6, and now g3, Giri went for the Catalan. With d5, bishop g2, and now bishop b4 check, Giri covered through bishop d2, and here Carlsen simply returned the bishop to e7, a very typical Carlsen move. Giri continued with knight f3, transposing into the Bogo Indian, and with c6, Giri went on and castled. Carlsen castled too, and now with queen c2, just in case the pawn captures on c4, Carlsen developed the knight to d7, and the game continued with rook d1, and the very solid knight e4, establishing himself on a very central and powerful square. Bishop f4 was half a tricky move because it provokes black to play g5. And this is exactly what Carlsen went for. This move in particular weakens black's defences and Giri banked on this move. Getting the bishop back to e3, here came Carlsen with another wild move, f5. And Giri here went for the exchange or better challenge the knight to react to Geary's knight c3 jump. Carlsen avoided the exchange and backed off the knight to d6. And here Holland's number one came up with a clever resource. Anyone? b3. And if you now take on c4, just try bishop c1 and everything works fine. Because should you go for another pawn on b3, once the a pawn recaptures, Yes, black has one pawn more, but it is white who's going to enjoy all the fun, and especially when the bishop gets into b2. But let's not deviate too much from where we were. After b3, Carlsen never captured, but instead went for bishop f6, giving the king some added defense and support. Giri returned the queen to c1, and was looking for Carlsen to do something about his g5 pawn. He came up with this easy h6, but once again, even the world champion may just fall short if Giri intensifies his attack on the king side. Giri here was also looking for a possible sacrifice, because when he is able to penetrate through the king side, Carlsen will run into trouble. Giri assessed the situation very fast and decided not to go for a sacrifice just yet because he didn't need to, as h4 had the same effect. Carlsen rushed his knight back to f7 as a result and once the two pawns here retired, Giri got the knight to a4. But what on earth was the knight going to do with this move? It would all be explained in the next move. Queen e7 got the knight rerouted to b2, and with b6, the knight hopped onto a more central square. And now with bishop b7, rook b1, and 
A5, Carlson was trying to cut through the A file. Once the knights got onto E5, the exchange was forced to avoid the fork on G6. And now with the pawn recapturing, Carlson had to choose between moving his bishop away or just removing the pawn on E5. He grabbed the pawn with the knight and with the exchange, Carlson was up by pawn. But was he really? No, because Geary could retaliate by either taking this pawn on b6 or this pawn on g5. He decided to go for the g pawn because this is exactly what he wanted. Getting rid of another pawn also strips the king from any protection. This had nothing to do with the attack on the queen because after bishop f6 the exchange opened up the path to the king. Does queen g5 check help? No, because after queen g7 and now queen f4, white hasn't got much attack potential because of all these pawns on the board that hinder many things. If we come back to moves or so, rather than queen g5 check, Giri came up with queen e3, but Carlson was in time to get the king closer to the other pieces, neutralizing any threats against him. But King F7, in fact, was a blunder. And why not? Let's hear it. Carlson here left a very important pawn uncovered, and Giri didn't need a second invite to take him. Carlson's response through Rook A6 attacking the Queen was all bark and no bite. Once the Queen returned to E3, the Rook returned to A8, but a pawn was a pawn. Rook d4 was in time to intercept Carlson's rook h8 move, but since this bishop here stops everything black may be planning for, Giri went for the exchange on d5, and now with rook c1, Giri meant business. Getting the rook into h6 was strong, but not strong enough, and in fact, this move accomplishes nothing. But this is a time to ask you to fish out White's best move and here we go in two, one and pause. There is no better move than Queen E5 and if you found it, <laughs> if you ignore this threat and let me just highlight using my arrows, something is going to give. Carlson immediately averted the disaster by returning his rook to c8 and with yet another exchange, just look at the state of both bishops. Okay, if it wasn't for the presence of this bishop here, white would have gone down. But what about the state of this bishop? He too seems to be miles away from the action. Rook d3 was very inferior, but, but what the heck? White here, in fact, can play nearly anything and still wins unless he blunders his queen or rook. The rook move to d3 was also provocative to encourage the bishop to attack him, but this will go right into white's hand because after rook c3, black will have to face the music once again with this rook c7 move and now black has no way of stopping it. But you know, it would take a bit more than this to fool the world champ because these are the types of tricks he loves to play. He therefore got his bishop to d7, but this again did not stop the rook from getting into c3. And believe it or not, we hardly see Carlson blunder once in a game. But what if he played a move like rook h8 with the idea of rerouting him to c8? Obviously, this move simply does not work because queen takes here on h8 will be game over. So let's return to the game and go through what Carlson chose to play. Anyone? <laughs> rook h8, not only dropping the rook for real, but also the game. The only game he lost in this blitz tournament. And what a weird development. Carlson not only blundered once, but twice something which equals 
rarity. But allow me to add a little bit here. The Rook to H8 move was the final nail in the coffin, but there was no way Carlsen could ever have come out of this in one piece. And in short, this is how Carlsen lost this game in round seven. But having said this, he still went on to win the tournament with a very impressive score. And on this note, many thanks for taking part and many, many, many thanks for watching.